yes, I do plan on making a bowl from a shelf. And I'm doing this for a couple of reasons. One is I've been asked, what is a good source for some wood that I can either make a nice bowl or just practice on? Well, this was a shelf. It was about four or five feet long. And my wife found it at an estate sale for free. And we used it out in the garage for quite a while and things changed. So I cut it up into smaller pieces figuring I'd make something out of it. The other reason is when I make a bowl on a board, people have asked, do they always have to have flat sides on about a 45 degree angle? And I've kind of went out on a limb and said, well, I think I can make one with a fairly curved side on it. So that's the plan. I sanded this side off. I drew an 11 inch circle. I'm going to get this cut and I'm going to get a block glued on it to mount it in the chuck. And let's find out if we can make a curved bowl from a shelf. Be right back. All right, I have it mounted in the chuck. I hot glued a tenon on the back, sanded the face I've marked for the first ring. I've been using this little parting tool that came in a kit of five that I bought. It didn't have a brand on it. It just says high speed steel. And I bought it at a garage sale, brand new for $5. And this works pretty good. But recently I bought a blade made by Robert Sorby. And I've promised that I would test this out, so I've just put a nice burr on it, and this will be the first test. And I have it kind of temporarily mounted in this handle. If it works out, I'll make its own handle for it. So we're going to be turning around 500 RPM to start, because it is a larger diameter. And uh, I'm going to get my face seal down, we're going to try this out. Cutting a 45 degree on the first one. Okay, I'm going to say that worked really nice. A lot better than my cheap one. Happy with that. So that's the first ring. Mark for the next one, we're going to cut a different angle. I may not be able to use my little guide here unless I put another slot in it. I'll be right back. Okay, so I cut the first ring on my 45 degree slot. And rather than cut new slots in here, I've adjusted this and this little template's at 55 degrees. So I'm using this slot right here. That's set to be 55 degrees. I don't know if I'll get all the way through with this one either, but uh, I'll get far enough that I can continue that down. I'll explain more of what I'm doing here when I get the rings cut and I have a little drawing made that'll explain it. So, let's see if we can get this one. closer and continue on that angle. Okay. Nice and clean. You've got to slow down right before you go through and you can hear that. Okay, I'll be cutting this one at 60 degrees and again I just need to get it started because these blades are not long enough to go through using this fixture. That's something else I'll have to work on.
Okay, I've got the last ring. I'm getting ready to glue it on. Get it set all night. And I'll do the rest of them tomorrow. This is ring three of the four rings. I'll go ahead and get it glued on and let it sit for a while. We'll get the last one on and once that is on, I'll show you the different angles and try to explain what's going on here. You might notice that this wood has a lot of little small cracks in it. Just make sure you keep watching towards the end and you'll see how I make them go away. Right about there. All right. Let that sit for an hour or so and we'll do the last one. Okay, last ring. This is the largest one. It's 11 inch diameter. And I really just need glue right here. And the rest of that hangs over and I can use it for some of the shape. I'm going to show you a little trick on adjusting this ring so that it's running concentric with the spindle. And I will do that on each ring if it looks like it needs it. But I'll put it on. If there's a big gap here and I come around here and that's touching, and if that gap I'll say was a quarter inch, I'll push that that way an eighth of an inch and I'll do that a couple times and the next thing you know we'll have it running concentric. So it's a handy little trick. To get it in the right place. Well this is ready to turn. It sat all night but I want to show you what I'm trying to do here. This first ring is cut at 45. This one's at 55 and that one's at 60. That has got the beginning shape of a curved surface on it. This is very similar to the way I built things with cans and that's what that's called. You have one this way, it's another one's canted that way and another one's canted like that. And you can do this with a round object, you can do it with a, well, any shape you want, actually. So let's go ahead and start turning this and see if it works out. I'm going to start with a half inch bowl gouge at about 800 RPM. And it looks like about what shows up on the drawing I made of it. We'll have to check that. I think it's about a 9 inch radius is what I was seeing. I'm going to clean the inside up and find out how much more I can cut here. Alright, let's get the inside turned now. And I'm going to use a 5 8 bowl gouge on the outside. I'm going to go back to the outside. I've got the inside pretty much shaped and ready to sand. I just want to make sure that I can get a nice shape on here without getting too thin. Just sharpen my half inch bowl gouge. I'll go ahead and start about 870 RPM. Okay, 
that's that's not bad. I just need to get this top edge and it really does not cut all that nice. The piece is, is actually loaded with cracks that I didn't think they were that far in. I knew the edge had some and I thought I cut them away. So that's one of the problems. But that's that's not too bad actually. And just because of how it is cutting, I'm going to try my negative break scraper. See if that'll do a little better. Anyway, got a nice burr on it so we'll go with that. So you just got a chance to see all those cracks. Pretty soon they're going to disappear and it will look amazing. Well that worked pretty good. A little cracks here and there. I think I'm going to try my little sanding trick again using the water-based sanding sealer and I think it'll fill all those in. But right now I'm going to go to the candy store. They call it the Woodworkers Candy Store. It's a local hardwood store that has more wood than you can ever imagine and I want to go and pick up some other woods. So I'll be back later and I think we'll start sanding on this. I'm going to go ahead and sand the outside now and because I have lots of cracks I know some of them will fill using my method where I use water-based sanding sealer and 150 grit but some of them are a little bigger so I'm going to try 80 grit see if we can make a little thicker slurry. I really didn't think I would be needing to do this on this piece of wood until I started cutting into it and saw all these little cracks. Now the trick is to get it plenty wet. It's not really a trick, but that's what you need to do. So that's that should be good. We can add more if we need it. And I'll sand in reverse for a couple reasons. I think it's less likely to spray all over me and I'm just more comfortable sanding this direction. Now I'm seeing a uh, little paste there that I'm making. I don't know if you can see that but that's just a it's a layer of the sawdust on here. Well, I think that might work pretty good. And that will not take that long to dry. So I'm going to go ahead and do the inside. And like most of this stuff, it's so much easier to show you on the outside. But I'll do the inside, let everything dry, and, uh, and we'll proceed to the next step. This is what it looks like when that sealer and slurry mix dries. And it looks like it's covered all the cracks. Hopefully it went down in them. So I'm going to go ahead and sand it with 120. I've got my dust collector right here because it, it will be pretty dusty and it has been sanding pretty easy. So let's see how this works out. 350 RPM. Well, this really sanded up nice and that slurry that I made by sanding with the sealer has filled in all the pores and all the little cracks and it didn't quite fill that one all the way but I'm going to leave it and I want to keep this fairly simple so I've got that sealer on it I'm going to use axe abrasive paste.
If you'd like to see all the steps in how I use abrasive paste and polish, I have a separate video for just doing that and I'll put a link in the description. Okay, I put some of the polish restoring paste on and I'm buffing it out right now. So as soon as I get that done, I'll remove the cannon which is hot glued on and I'll show you what we have. Alright, I'm going to see if I can get that hot glued tenon off. And uh, you can hear my heater going. I got up this morning and it was slightly below 32. So I want to get this off and go back in and warm up. I've got a little tub with denatured alcohol. I'm going to take this brush and I'm going to hold it this direction to try to keep it off of the finish on the bowl. Get that denatured alcohol pretty soaked with this and uh, it should come right off. I like to let that sit for just a little while and that's what I'll do and then I'll come back and show you how easy it is to get it Okay, off. I just went and changed my battery. Whoop, it just fell off. I just went and changed my battery and come back in and pick this up and it, it just fell off. That's how easy it'll release. I just need to sand this up and uh, sign it and we can call this one done. Well here it is. It's all done. And I think it's a very pretty bowl from not such a pretty shelf. And I didn't mention it, but I'm fairly certain that this is oak. Couldn't really tell with the finish on it, but it sure looks like it's oak of some sorts. And there's a number of things I really enjoyed in the process of making this. And one was making a nice bowl from a shelf. And the other was getting curved sides on a bowl from a board. So you can see that's got a pretty decent curve. And I mentioned in the video that's because I cut different angles on each one. And that's something I did building patterns and they call them cants. And they were not necessarily round. As a matter of fact, most were not round. They just took on different shapes of what they needed. So that's a nice way to be able to do it. And maybe I'll make a video showing how you can cut those angles and also cut them and make them line up perfectly. The other thing I liked was the fact that this piece of wood was almost in my mind to take it off and grab a different piece because of all the cracks. Filling it with the slurry that I did with water-based sanding sealer and sanding it. That worked out quite well. And it's 10 inches in diameter. It's 3 inches tall and the base is 2 and 3 quarters. And for the finish I used the Axe Abrasive Paste and Polish. So I had a lot of fun making this and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did like the video, do me a favor and click that like button. And while you're there, it would be great if you could share the video around. Those two things will really help my channel grow. Leave a comment, I read them all and I do my best to answer them all. Thanks to all my subscribers, and if you're not, please consider doing so. I do a mix of all types of turnings. Some are simple and some are complex, so let me know your favorite. Thanks again, and until the next time, see you later.